Well, good afternoon. Today is talking about a serial killer. His name is William Devin Lowell. Oh, Hal, sorry. Um, so I'm going to wait until people get in here. Well, hey, Frank, how are you today? How has your morning been? I missed everybody for coffee today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. How about Sleuth doing all that work when meant to be on? Yeah, I know. She needs to be on vacation. She needs her vacation. She does awesome. You know, I love Sleuth. I do appreciate all the stuff that she does. Um, I am going to check out her stuff. I was just getting my glasses fixed and my daughter's knee checked out. I was hoping to get more people in, but whatever. To each is their own. They want to come in, they want to come in. Good, good. Um, it was a bruised patella. So, so it's just ice, heat, well, mostly ibuprofen, the doctor said, so. But she, she definitely had fun when she injured herself, if I can say that much. <laughs> so today is the Connecticut serial killer, William Devin Howell. He describes the shocking details of his crime. So I'm just going to check this out. Um, William De Devin Howell is considered the most pro prolific serial killer in Connecticut history, having murdered a total of seven people throughout 2003. And this is, um, I want to give this person credit, um, first of all. So this is by Ann K. Howard. I always cite people's articles. Um, 
prolific serial killer in Connecticut history, having murdered a total of seven people throughout 2003. He was convicted of six of the murders while already in prison for manslaughter in the seventh victim's death. He dumped the victim remains of his victims, Nelsa Arzum, Arzumendi, Melanie Caminelli, Danny Winsnot, also known as Janice Rob, Roberts, Diane Kuzak, Marilyn Gonzalez, Mary Jane Menard, and Jayoville Martinez in what he called his garden behind a mall in New Britain. In 2017, he received six consecutive life sentences. In July 2015, before Howell pleaded guilty to the six murders, lawyer and writer Ann K. Howard struck up a correspondence with the killer. While sending her hundreds of pages of letters, her new book, His Garden Conversations with the Serial Killer, is derived from from these letters, face-to-face -face visits with Howell, discussions with victims, family members, police interviews, trial transcripts, and more. The excerpts below is from Howard's book and is reprinted with permission of Wild Blue Press. The following content contains distributing accounts of violence and sexual violence. Why did you kill him, Bill? It wasn't about killing him. It was about the essay. The prosecutor don't know this, but I didn't just essay three of them. They based that on what Jonathan Mills, Howell's former cellmate, had told them. How would you how would they know that I essayed just three? The bodies were nothing but bones when they dug them up. I essayed all of them except Danny Winston. Cause he was a man? Yeah, I picked him up in New Britain. After leaving the Cadillac Ranch in Southington, he was wearing a short miniskirt and high heels, and he had long, shoddy black hair. I thought he was a woman. I drove to a nearby grocery store parking lot for $20 um, service. When I put my hand on his head and pulled off the wig, he was wearing, I discovered he was a guy, and I killed him right off. How did you kill him? I punched him a couple times and then strangled him. Did you strangle Melanie Camille too? Yeah. I first tried to kill Camille by hitting her in the head with a hammer. She didn't see it coming. That's another thing Mills got wrong when he talked to the cops. He said, I tried to strangle Camille. But she wouldn't die, so I beat her in the head with a hammer. That's backwards. I hit her with the hammer first, pretty hard, and it didn't even knock her out. She said, please don't kill me. Don't hit me with the hammer again. I didn't have the heart to hit her again, if that makes sense, so I strangled her. How did you feel when you were killing them? Did it give you pleasure, a sense of power? No, no, Anne. It was never about the killing. I just killed them to conceal the evidence. I knew that once I essayed them, they would go to the cops and I'd end up back in jail. So I had to keep that from happening. I definitely didn't enjoy killing them. As I choked them out, I was thinking, just hurry up and die. But you didn't essay Danny Winston, so you weren't trying to conceal evidence then. Did you kill him because you were angry when you discovered he was a man? Yeah, exactly. When you sliced... Melanie's fingertips was that so the cops couldn't ID her fingertips if they found the body? Yep. And Mills said some crap about me dismantling her jaw. That's not true. I just pulled out a couple teeth after she was dead. So I'm going to put actually trigger warning. Yeah, he is a nightmare. I didn't know that this was like this. So, here we go. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but I gave up and stopped. I realized that they found her. It would probably have been 
Moot, anyways, she was the only one I did that to. What do you do with the teeth and fingerprints? I put them in a plastic grocery bag and threw them in the, into a trash can outside the family dollar store in Brit on New Britain Ave. Interesting, the same man who would open the door for me if I walked up behind him to enter the family dollar store was also capable of disposing of human remains in the trash bin outside the store. In a follow-up letter containing details confessions of all the essays and murders, Bill wrote, there is one thing I have been dishonest about, and that is that I did remove Camille's lower jaw in attempt to hide her identity. I lied to you about this because I was embarrassed by the sheer gruesomeness of it. Even as I was doing it, I couldn't believe I was doing it. I put her fingertips and jaw in a plastic bag and threw them in a dumpster besides the dollar store on New Britain Ave in Hartford. Mill said, you slept besides Camille's body in the back of the van and called her your baby. He adamantly shook his head. I slept beside her because I had no choice, but I never called her baby. I told Mills that I slept beside the body. Words cannot express all the pain and anguish so many of us had to endure since these murders. With every ounce of blood that ran through my veins, I want to hate you. But all I can do is pray that God can forgive you for all you have done. And I pray that he will give us the peace to continue living our lives. I, Tiffany Menard, daughter of one of Hell's victims, Mary Jane Menard, in her victim impact statement. That was an expert from his garden conversations with a serial killer by Ann K. Howard. that's that article wow that was pretty intense guys <coughs> that was really intense I didn't know that article was like that I'm so sorry wow really intense I know obviously he's a serial killer, so what did I expect? But let's see, I'm gonna find some news to see. No, Mr. Frank West. You're not supposed to tell anybody. Tell my secrets. So sources identify suspected serial killer after seven bodies found. Where is everybody? And hi, Fruit Loop. Hi, Frank. Hey, Frank. Developing the story of NBC Connecticut has learned, learned this, this man, man William, William Devin, Devin Powell, Powell, is suspected of killing at least seven people. He is currently behind bars on manslaughter charges. Now, this is the very latest information on the serial murders in New Britain. Four of the seven victims have been identified. All are women who vanished in 2003. All the remains have been found in the woods behind a New Britain shopping center. That's where we find NBC Connecticut's Deborah Bogsty. Deb. Carrie Lee, Brad, prosecutors and police have yet to officially identify a suspect in this case. They have not filed charges at this point. The first victims were discovered here in this wooded area back in 2007. The last four just discovered here in this area in recent weeks as families wait for a serial killer to be brought to justice. We have no reason to believe that there is any threat whatsoever to the general public. No comment today, but during a news conference Monday, police and prosecutors announced they do have a suspect in the murders of at least seven people. The remains of four victims were just discovered last month in this now cleared land behind a New Britain strip mall. Only one, Melanie Camellini, has been identified. 
the first three, Diane Cusack, Joy Valine Martinez, and Mary Jane Menard, were found in 2007. Multiple law enforcement sources tell NBC Connecticut William Devin Howell is the prime suspect in the killings. Howell is now serving a 15-year prison sentence after being convicted of manslaughter in 2007 in the death of Nilsa Arizmendi, who disappeared from Weathersfield in 2003 and whose body was never found. That her blood is found in Mr. Howell's van. The prosecutor on the case then, Brian Proleski, now the New Britain state's attorney, addressed the media at Monday's news conference. We had no information that would have led us to excavate uh, back in uh, 2007. In the Arizmendi case, state records show authorities found her blood in Howell's van. Those records also show the case remains open, as authorities also found a substantial amount of blood in the van from another victim. Also found in that van, a video with images of these two women, who authorities are still trying to identify. Now, at this point, authorities are still trying to identify the remains of those last three victims uncovered here recently. We can tell you police and prosecutors say they're hoping to file charges soon. Reporting live in New Britain, Deborah Bogsty, NBC Connecticut News. Brad, back to you. Oh, I was still muted. <laughs> okay, so this is the bug. I thought it had a video, but I guess not. But she was like, she talked to him for eight months. And it has all the stories, all the like transcripts of the tape and everything. Quite, that would be quite interesting to read. But I'm going to actually, so this is, um, I'm going to do the news report of him pleading guilty. I didn't really, like, um, research him. It was kind of like a spur of the moment I wanted to have somebody to talk about. Oh, good. So let me do this article. Come on now.
In August 2007, the hunter found what appeared to be human or human skull discarded in the dense swampy foliage behind a nondescript shopping plaza in New Britain, Connecticut. The discovery in a post-industrial city with a large immigrant population. Am I still muted? <gasps> Sherry! I wanted a news report. I'm very selfish today. I'm in a like kind of a mood. Here we go, here we go. Sorry guys. <clears throat> Hold on. My daughter. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I was catching up. Oh, yeah, I was catching up on her videos earlier. Um, oh, it's listen to the article. So let's listen. And now a poem from Cumberland Farms. Every Friday in May, my fountain. Drink is free at the Cumberland Farm store near me. Excludes frozen, limit is one. Any size, just fill up and run. Free fountain drinks any size on Fridays in May at Cumberland Farms. Send us your poem. Sorry, this article can't be played at this moment. Please check back later. Power a house full of connected devices with supersonic Wi-Fi. I've just seen if there's any more news on um, him. Okay, so these are pictures of his victims. Um, this is William Devin Hall, serial killer. So she is Melanie Camille. Oh. That's all his paperwork. So they didn't really have that many pictures. That was um, that was a tease with pictures, right? That's his lovely face. <clears throat> I can't even imagine how many people didn't get hurt because Mr. Howell was convicted. 
of manslaughter in 2005. Weathersfield Police Chief James Citrin said last week after it was announced that she, the skeletal remains of Nilsa Erzermendi was found, whom has been convicted of killing, was found in the same area of the seven bodies. Interesting. Another skeletal remains in New Britain, Melanie Ruth Camilli. Then we have. That's just. This is just insane. He was just crazy, like most serial killers. What are we talking about? All right, let's check this. So we talked about this lovely, lovely serial killer. What's going on? What's the, what's the gossip today? I'm just catching up on the chat. Yeah, I, I noticed this. So what are we doing? Working at the car wash. Car wash guy. Did you find me a boyfriend? My innocent eyes. Yeah, I know. The stork dropped off my four kids. <clears throat> so today is... All right, so I covered him. So, so who else do you think we should cover on Wednesday?
how well we want. I am so lost in this conversation. Oh, we got more people. So we got Sherry, Frank, Fruit Loop. Yeah, I'm really confused, Fruit Loop. All right, so we covered William Dippenhall. He killed seven people, and he only liked the factor of the essay. He only killed them because of the fact that he knew that they would go to the police. Who is forced? He might have been coerced. They always say that. Don't drink. Yeah, William Devon Hell, he was a serial killer. He was a drifter from Connecticut, and he um, killed seven people. One was a guy by mistake. I'm really, really confused, to be honest with you. Harmony's case. Okay. <laughs> you bored of that one? Ooh, hold on. I see you are. I'm really excited. One day ago, I didn't see this. What the? <sighs> Let's discuss this, guys. So, Kayla's released, mom asks, where's the justice? Okay, so she wasn't released on any charges that had to do with the disappearance or harmony at all whatever, whatsoever. And people that do welfare fraud actually only spend about four months in jail. And she hasn't even been arraigned or anything for the gun charges or anything.
Crystal says, this is the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Harmony's mother, Crystal, 31 of Massachusetts, tells people she is a recovering heroin addict who hasn't used drugs in almost three years. She lost Harmony on a FaceTime call Easter in 2019. Following Kayla's release, she told people, it's absolute BS. I really feel like not enough is being done to find my daughter's whereabouts. It just baffles me, she adds. Where is the justice for Harmony? Where are all the promises that were made in the beginning when Harmony's case came out? Nobody's has gotten answers. She adds, in the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life, and I've been through quite a few hard situations in my life. When Kayla was arrested on the felony gun charges, Harmony's uncle hoped that answers on Harmony's whereabouts would be forthcoming. Hopefully that gets her to talk. The uncle, Tim Flanagan Jr., told people, because I really believe that there's no way she doesn't know what happened. The couple was seen with other children, but not Harmony. Harmony was not reported missing for two years, but she was last seen according to to the timeline in the case the Manchester police released in January. Authorities say Harmony, then five, appeared to be living with Adam, Kayla, and the couple's two other children on the Gilbert Street home. Multiple individuals report seeing the girl with Adam and Kayla in the days that followed, according to the January statement, but between December 6th to the December 10th, the couple was seen with only ten, two children they share and not harmony. This information leads police to believe that it was sometime during the window of approximately November 28th to December 10th. She disappeared. In her order, Messer wrote that Kayla was limited his, criminal history and that her contacts in the state are significant. She barely has a record. That's why she got released. Bottom line. Yeah, she is very tiny. And you know what? There's no reason why she should have been held. Kayla's release. If you put it together, like, there's nothing they could have found or anything. Um, unfortunately, we have the constitutional right to not talk. If she knows anything. That's if she knows anything. And I'm not saying I don't know what my opinion is on anything. Because of the fact that I've been told things and lied to. So... But let's go to the good story, okay? Um, NBC. Hold on. I'll go to my Twitter right here. I'll go to my Twitter and pull it up. Yeah, all I've been is lied to throughout this case, and it just, people just are very deceiving. So let me see. So... And I really appreciate that Jonathan. Um, and Blair, they're amazing. To be honest. Hey, uh, Frank, can you drop um, Sherry's link, please? Or Sherry, can you drop your own link? I don't know how to do it.
mishandling a missing little girl's case. 25 investigators have learned a Massachusetts lawmaker is demanding action. The report found the safety and well-being of Harmony Montgomery was not prioritized. Anchor and investigative reporter Carrie Cavanaugh live for us at the State House. And Carrie, you just talked with the state lawmaker who filed legislation today. So the report from the child advocate made several recommendations, including forming a working group to examine child's well-being, their best interests versus that of parental. rights. And this afternoon, State Senator Michael Moore filed a budget amendment to the Senate's version of the bu budget calling for the creation of the Montgomery Commission. This is that amendment right here. This commission would examine that very issue. I don't know how many children right now are going through this process that, uh, that could be tragedies waiting to occur. That's why Massachusetts Senator Moore wants to create the Montgomery Commission a special legislative commission to study, examine, and make recommendations regarding the welfare and best interest considerations of children in care and protection cases. The commission would be a 21-member committee of child welfare stakeholders, including experienced family court attorneys, court-appointed advocates, juvenile court judges, and governor's appointees from DCF and the Office of the Child Advocate. And it really sounds like you're trying to bring everyone to the table. Yes, you may have some members of the uh, state agencies or involved in this case that may dispute the findings. But by having this commission, it's a time for them to present their information. The system failed Harmony. That was state child advocate Maria Masides on May 4th. It was her sad conclusion from the 100-page report into how Harmony was ultimately sent off to live with her father, Adam Montgomery, in New Hampshire, a man with a violent criminal record. After years in and out of DCF foster care, a judge granted custody to Adam and sent Harmony off without any plan in place to check in on her. Harmony hasn't been seen in more than two years. The child advocate said it's the result of the ripple effect of miscalculations of risk and an unequal weight placed on parents' rights versus a child's well-being. But if a parent is not suitable um, to provide the care and custody and protect that child, the um, child shouldn't be there. The Montgomery Commission would also have an eye on equity and study how care and protection cases disproportionately impact children of color, immigrant children, and poor children. So if the legislature decides to go ahead and form this Montgomery Commission, it would have to convene within 30 days of getting that approval, and it would have to come up with its own recommendations by September 2023. Live in Boston at the State House, I'm Carrie Cavanaugh for 25 Investigates. Carrie, thank you. And if you have information on the disappearance of Harmony Montgomery, police want to hear from you. There is a tip line available for anyone to call and a reward as well. That reward now worth more than $150,000. That was an interesting site. Okay. Yeah, so so um, that's an awesome thing. The Montgomery Commission. I like that name. It sounds professional. There are laws that are the Harmony's Law and stuff like that already. So the Montgomery Commission sounds amazing. Um, I do have a lot of support from Jonathan Blair with my... Um, with my petition that's going around that's actually for like um reform for um oh my god what is that word i am so out of it today guys my brain has been doing so much Follow-up care. CPS follow-up care. I am so sorry. <laughs> Duh, PJ. <laughs> so 
they've been so much, so much support for me. Um, yeah and I appreciate them you know what I mean I, they're amazing you know what I mean? foster parents and adopting adoptive people that adopt pe children are like rock stars I don't want to get like emotional about it but Thank you. I wish it was amazing. I'm working. I'm getting like I'm getting better at my um, lives and stuff like that. I wanna. I'm trying to think. So tonight we're doing a birthday party for Michael McLean. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it. So just bear with me. He's been missing for three years. So, yeah. So, when I do put it up for Michael McLean for his birthday party, um, it's going to be kind of like a thing so people can just come and see because I'm going to kind of make like a, a video that just keeps going with like all his information and stuff like that. So, I'm, I'm working on that today. Um, it's just kind of like showing his name, his face, and stuff like that because his story needs attention, and it's his birthday. Um, so, and his parents, his family had put something. I'm stealing it out of our messages, Frank. So... So I'm trying to put something together. I just want to thank everyone for showing support for my son, Michael McLean, who went missing in Nashua, New Hampshire on April 20th, 2019. Thank you for showing support to all missing children. Was it his birthday? Oh my God. Did I mess up? Oh no, it's not his birthday. I screwed up. Never mind. She put the wrong background. She says it in the comment. She's so funny. I love her. She is the sweetest lady. Like, Michael, yeah, I'm going to bring his name on. Is it his birthday? I don't know. I want to bring him and Amanda. I really want to bring attention to. When was he born? Lonely family. And it was showing me on the Charlie Project. Oh, excuse me. Michael. 
Oh, two five, so February. Nope, not his birthday. Okay, I lied. Sorry, I lied. But I'm I'm planning on do something special with like Amanda and Michael McLean. And that way I'm trying to get my my channel to stick out more. Um somehow so I don't know just an idea guys so that's the biggest news in her case I do want to drop this link so this is the petition and I added a story just let me show you guys the petition and then I'll get off I guess so this is the petition and I've been adding stories, like Gabrielle's story and stuff like that on here. So it's for all the children nationwide. So please share it. Please share my um. Please share my channel and stuff like that. No. Um. If you have any ideas for um, serial killers anywhere, let me know. Oh, okay, back in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm a dork. So just let me know. You can message me anytime. I know Frank usually has ideas. Um, but I want to just keep things... I just want to keep things going. And um, I'm going to look up some missing person cases and stuff like that to see, like, cool some interesting stories and stuff. Yeah. True Frank. And I like to throw Frank on the panel here and there. We 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 work good together. And I wanna um do a panel with like you, Frank and Sleuth when she comes back. Because one of our viewers I want to bring awareness to and I want to do it with all of us. Frank knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, it is getting kind of late and my kiddos are home. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Fruit Loop. I'm going to let you guys head over to Savages, but please like, share. Um, tell your friends to come say hey to Crazy PJ. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. I love you guys. Tomorrow, um, I believe tomorrow is my CPS one. So talk to you guys soon. Bye.